Hi, this is my video review of Heroes of Horror. Heroes of Horror is a book that allows you to create uh, some pretty good, uh, uh, scary and creepy campaigns for Dungeons and Dragons 3.0, 3.5, and of course you can also use it with Pathfinder. The, the challenge of, of creating a, a creepy or scary adventure or campaign for, for uh, those kind of, kinds of games um, is that the, the player characters are, are too powerful, they never feel completely afraid of the enemies they will face, they're, they're always uh, thinking in a very tactical way about how they can use their powers to defeat them, because the, uh, player characters in, in Dungeons and Dragons 3.0, 3.5 and, and Pathfinder, especially in Pathfinder, they some, sometimes they feel like superheroes, uh, and they have all these powerful uh, feats and, and different spells and, and character abilities that uh, really gives them a good fighting chance against almost anything. So this book tell you ha tells you how to put the, the fear back into your Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Uh, well, let's talk about the physical qualities of the book. It, it has a sturdy cover, it, it has some good quality paper and some good illustrations. I will show you some of the illustrations because some of them are truly evocative and, and excellent. And uh, the book also gives you clear explanations on how to integrate these scary rules and, and details to your adventures. Okay, first of all, the book starts with um, uh, talking about uh, horror encounters, uh, setting the stage, creating horror, and they give you uh, what they call horrific ideas uh, about how to handle uh, the unknown, the unforgivable, the unthinkable, the unexpected, uh, so you can uh, create a campaign based on, on those uh, moods or themes. You also get a, a, an excellent list of creepy effects. Uh, some of them are, are cliched or maybe classic, for example, a, how, a wolf house in the distance, and then um, a PC finds blood on his clothes or blankets with no obvious source. A PC has a sudden premonition of doom for the peaceful village her group is currently passing through. A PC hears a voice scream in the distance. It sounds like her own. So they have all these uh, thematic uh, flourishes or, or uh, decorations to make the, the adventure more creepy and, and you know, have a, that sense of uh, foreboding or oppression or that you don't know uh, what's going to happen next. Some are really weird, for example... Mm -hmm. Ah, yes. A, a character hears the soft giggling of a little girl or distant music. Nobody else can hear it. So the, it also plays with the paranoia, the sense of paranoia of that specific character. Uh, you also have uh, uh, some uh, point good pointers on how to portray villains in, in a horror setting. And uh, it talks about not just make them be the villains um, menacing in a, in a sense of, of uh, what they can do to the heroes, but just uh, like small details that make them look really disturbing. For example, the villain never blinks, or the villain asks for a small sample of hair and skin or blood from each PC just in case. Uh, the villain has a lazy eye that always seems to leer at female party members. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, there are some other disturbing details, for example, um, one, uh, the villain has his face covered in like pustules and boils, and, and sometimes they just break out and, and spill out pus, and that's really yucky. And there's there are also uh, there's also another disturbing detail that the villain is always trying to clutch at something uh, as if the villain is trying to strangle someone. I actually knew a guy like that who who was constantly doing this while he talked, and and, and he actually thought Hitler was a pretty awesome person. So I think they got this villain straight. Um, pretty well, pretty close to reality. Uh, we have an encounter talking about, ah uh, yeah, the uh, grandmother's house, this is actually a very disturbing encounter. If you are a player, I, I wouldn't recommend uh, that you watch this video because uh, there are spoilers, but for the game masters and dungeon masters, uh, here we go. Uh, grandmother's house is basically a, a very disturbing and sick encounter for them. Uh, what you see here it's actually a, a, a hag disguised as an old woman with her great jester lover in the background and all of those children, uh, they kidnapped all those children and they hypnotized them uh, so they feed uh, the hag but they are feeding her uh, pieces of other children so th that's very disturbing, that, that little kid over there feeding the hag with a fork it, it's, it's, he's feeding the hag a, a piece of human flesh
So that's a very disturbing encounter, and they give you a good uh, a layout on, on how to, to play it as a sort of mystery that a town uh, suddenly asks for the PC's help because the children are disappearing and they have to investigate around the, the lake of the town and the woods. Yeah, and it's, you can set a really uh, creepy and moody atmosphere. You also have a, a, another encounter that's uh, called Annalise Baby. And this is uh, kind of like, uh, it's a woman who's going to give birth to a, a demonic child and the PCs may actually have to team up with a, with a ghost to, uh, who is actually the, the, was the father of the child but he died trying to stop him. Uh, well, stop his, uh, sorry, stop his uh, birth. And the, the PCs actually have to team up with this ghost to, 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 to avoid further casualties. They also give you a, a new demigod, uh, his name is Kaz, and he's actually the god of spite and vengeance. They give you a, an avatar for it with stats and everything, so you can uh, hear this. It looks kind of cool, kind of like a minotaur, but, well, you know. Yeah, and they give you a lot of stats, uh, so the, the player characters can, can fight against him. His uh, challenge rating 25, so that, that's, that's uh, better than other avatars I've seen. Uh, yeah, I've seen other avatars in, in uh, 3.0 and 3.5 books, and they are all, always uh, challenge rating 9, and that's not very powerful. They also give you good, good tips on how to uh, design uh, horror adventures with uh, plot, story, mood, setting. And they tell you exactly what it is that, that makes uh, a horror adventure uh, dark and, and disturbing. They'll tell you that it's not about uh, trying to harm the, the characters, because uh, when maybe if you had to to create a, a horror adventure in in a rush you would uh, think oh uh, that's no problem I, i'll just put a lot of undead that have energy drain abilities and, and the pieces will get very scared because they don't want to get near them but in this book they talk to you about how horror in a very lovecraftian sense is about uh, facing the unknown and not knowing exactly what what it is that it hap that it's happening on or uh, who is the villain or, or uh, where did the villain get all that power or, uh, and uh, you have to keep the characters in the unknown and and always uh, n not know exactly what it, what it is that's wrong with the adventure another good thing about this book is that uh, it has a lot of of maps just blank maps so for you to fill out with different encounters and and scenes and they also give a, a good, good advice about how to make uh, character classes scary, especially for, for antagonists. For example, let's, let's take this scene over here. Maybe if you had a, a, an evil ranger or a druid, maybe uh, that character unleashes a, a plague or, or s some powerful me menace in the form of uh, a wild animals that are just killing townsfolk all over. Uh, you could also create a, an evil monk who is just murdering people with a quivering palm or quivering, uh -huh, a quivering palm to uh, mm, and to cause panic and just experiment with people different the martial arts techniques and that that's very very disturbing. Mm. You also get another a mini campaign uh, uh, about a man who was so spiteful that he unwittingly became the cleric of Cas, the demigod I showed you a while ago. Mm. You also get a lot more details about how to create a horror campaign. For example, what if the world was actually enslaved by orcs and humans were li like cattle? Or they also tell you how to modify different campaign settings, such as Eberron or, or Faerun for the Forgotten Realms and uh, Greyhawk. So, so they uh, turn into uh, like a nightmarish version of, of those campaign settings. But the ideas I think that, uh, concerning these settings aren't very original. They, they, I think most most GMs or uh, dungeon masters will have thought about these uh, modifications on their own. Mm -hmm. You also get a, a, a little bit of information about how to handle unhappy endings because a lot of horror stories um, have a very sad or very tragic ending. They also give you another sample campaign, uh, Nightwatch. This campaign, I think, it, it has a good potential because the, the PCs um, enter the, this organization called the Nightwatch who uh, fight against all sorts of, of undead and, and creatures of the night. But um, halfway through the campaign, the Night Watch uh, gets destroyed because there was a traitor involved, maybe a vampire or a, or a niche, 
on uh, this guy sing as a member of the of the organization. Mm. That's uh, some awesome illustration right here. Is it just me or did Wayne Reynolds forget to to add a mouth to that uh, bard? I forget his name, but as you see, he has no mouth. <laughs> Well, let's see what else. Oh, of course, there's a good chapter. Uh, a lot of information about handling dreams and nightmares. So you can have a, a sort of, um, like, uh, that Lovecraftian story. Uh, wh what was the name? Ah, like the Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, uh, where the characters are actually traveling uh, through a, an entire dreamscape, uh, trying to uh, search for something or find their way out, or, or maybe they, they're looking for a lost person, a person that got lost in that a strange plane of, of dreams. You also have a, a lot of tweaks for uh, fear and shock and dread because a lot of monsters and, and enemies can uh, cause fear effects o over the player characters but in a very statistical way but here they, they enhance that fear a bit more and they add some thematic flourishes so that it doesn't feel like just a special attack but like an actual effect that has powerful consequences and very powerful negative consequences over the PCs and it, it, it tells you how to to um, uh, give that uh, horror or disturbing effect to each uh, scary attack or, or fear based attack mm, you also get a, a lot of information about the taint of evil and this uh, takes a good chunk of the book taint is, is it's very much like um, like the sanity system in Call of Cthulhu and in other fear horror games where uh, you need to ke keep a track of, of a certain uh, certain number of points that affects your character in, in other ways uh, besides physical damage uh, for example if the characters uh, constantly fight against supernatural or tainted beings or maybe they camp at uh, the cursed castles or haunted ruins they will start uh, their bodies will start changing with uh, maybe their their teeth will start to come out a bit like like fangs and they will start their their skin will turn gray and they also get um, psychological changes negative changes for example they may get uh, aggressive uh, bestial they may have hallucinations so if the characters are not are not careful they will um, eventually become monsters themselves there's actually a, a lot of um, there are a lot of uh, feats and spells related to to how you can uh, use taint against your enemies because that you can also use it like that, but also uh, ways in, in which you can heal your taint. Mm, let's see. You also have uh, have a lot of uh, more information about how to change uh, spells and, and effects for a creepier uh, mood. For example, the divination. Maybe all your prophecies are like can, can very disastrous or like apocalyptic uh, and if you the, the resurrection for example if you start raising a fallen comrade maybe uh, like the pet cemetery from Stephen King maybe uh, a different spirit or soul enters the body you also have a chapter talking about uh, well new classes uh, but the classes are, are okay. I think they were they are exactly balanced. The archivist, um, it's it's like a cleric, but very with light armor. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, get, there we go. The, the archivist is, is like a cleric with uh, lightly armored, mm, but he gives a, a certain edge uh, against aberrations and extra dimensional beings, anything that that is otherworldly. You also get the dread necromancer, who is actually uh, a caster, but but it's also pretty decent in in close uh, combat. I think this class may be overpowered. I, I've never played it, and and I haven't seen it in action. But by by the stats of it, because the class has a, a lot of spells and a lot of touch attacks, and the armor class gets better and better, and eventually the dread necromancer turns into a leech. So. Sorry, that's Leek, right? Yeah. Well, it turns into an, an undead mage, and it, it just seems too powerful. You also have prestige classes based on on taint. For example, you have the corrupt avenger uh, right here, who is uh, very skilled in using his his taint to damage others. 
the, in a horror adventure or a campaign, uh, more specifically, I don't think this class is very useful because taint only damages those who aren't or, uh, undead or untainted. So this class looks better to, uh, as a as an antagonist because if you're a PC and you're in a non-dead based campaign, you're going to be facing a lot of undead and tainted characters, so, uh, so you're not going to be able to to damage them with your taint. You also have the Death Delver, who is basically a monk with uh, some death abilities, like a monk that worships death. Mm. You also have the Dread Witch, who also, well, and she, she also, I think, works better as an antagonist because all, all, all her attacks are fear based, and, and if you're fighting against a lot of undead, they're going to be pretty useless. You also have uh, the Fiend Blooded, which is kind of like a tiefling, but with a lot of, and a lot of demonic blood. Uh, so it gives him different attacks, uh, different bonuses. So I, I guess uh, you could play as a tiefling, thin blooded for a lot of demonic blood. Mm. You also get the purifier of the hallowed, hallowed doctrine, who is a cleric uh, that uh, deals with uh, removing taint. That's pretty handy for this setting because taint is all over the place here. You also get the Tainted Scholar, who is a, a caster who uses, kind of like the Corrupt Avenger, uses his taint for different um, bonuses when using his spells. You also get uh, the new pits that I, uh, fits, sorry, that I told you, that I had to deal with, with, with taint and, and uh, things related to a bit to the undead. Mm. You have uh, spells also that, that deal with, uh, with taint again, things that uh, you reduce this level of taint, or you you taint this other character. Uh, it's uh, kind of like that, but you get some uh, interesting spells too. For example, fire, fire in the blood. Uh, with this spell, uh, if an enemy hurts you, uh, you squirt acid out of your body and, and damages uh, the enemy. Mm -hmm. You also get some magical items, but um, compared to and to the items that I saw in, in Libris Mortis, I think this uh, this section is lacking. You have a classic one though, a Serorax robe, you know, from the Tomb of Horrors. But they, it's, they, it really doesn't have much items, many items. Uh, you also get um, a chapter talking about how to um, modify classic creatures like dragons and giants and make them a bit scarier, how to create an entire horror campaign around them because for example a dragon well it's scary now it's a big it's a big creature with claws and teeth and it should, it should fire off its mouth but mm, it, it, here it deals with a bit more disturbing facts as if for example why do dragons uh, kidnap maidens or princes and maybe the dragon wants to have uh, some uh, draconic children and so so that gets a bit a bit more dark or, or disturbing about the reasons why they do things or maybe fairies or fate that have uh, such a twisted sense of humor that they start killing people as some sort of joke. You have a, a small beast cherry, uh, s some undead creatures, and you also have a giant, a really cool looking giant over here. I remember I saw him here we go. And you have different different creatures like that, and the great jester that, that I told you about, uh, who uh, everybody uh, has a secret fear of clowns and and jesters, right? <laughs> so so you get um, monsters for with those themes in mind. And that's about it. Well, let me tell you what I think about this book. This book is pretty useful um, for those who who get stuck when and they are trying to create a campaign maybe in, in the Ravenloft setting or, or in their own setting but uh, they, they feel that the player characters are too powerful and, and they run out of ideas on how to scare them or make the situation a bit more tense because as you all know for example Ravenloft Ravenloft is a, is a very old school setting where the fear or the element of horror is firmly rooted in the limitations of player characters as you well know advanced dungeons and dragons characters are nothing in terms of power compared uh, with the characters of 3.0 3.5 pathfinder so most of the the scares from that setting came from oh, oh my god what's going to happen to my to my character he's probably going to fail his save and die immediately 
uh, but in Pathfinder and Dungeons and Dragons in 3.0, 3.5, your characters are, are a lot tougher with uh, better uh, saving throws and, and a lot of feats to, to help them help them escape certain death. So it, this is a, a good book uh, for 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 inje to inject uh, a new sense of dread to those campaigns. I think the only negatives about this book are the lack of, of magic items, the short beast theory, and maybe th they dedicated too much to the taint rules, because not a lot of people are going to be comfortable keeping a, a tally or a record of, of the, uh, the taint that his or her character has. That's a bit um, bothersome if you have so you already have so many modifiers because of the character uh, powers and feats, and you get another um, neg negative, uh, positive modifier because of of taint. That that may be a bit too much. Maybe for advanced players and uh, not really, but for casual players, it's going to be maybe a bit um, annoying or cumbersome. Well, um, thanks for watching my review. If you have any comments, please type them down, and I will read them. See you later.